thanks to German Knife Shop for sponsoring Everyday Tactical Vids. German-knife-shop.com Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids. I'm out just for a short woods walk. This is going to be similar to my nature hike I did probably, I don't know, about a month ago. And uh, in this walk, I'm just going to identify a bunch of uh, plants, wild edibles, poisonous things, just letting you know about some of the plants that are here in your eastern woodlands. Before we go any deeper into our nature walk here, I just want to mention to you, you got to get with a, uh, get a really good resource to know and identify very clearly uh, medicinal and edible plants and also you should be absolutely with somebody who's a professional in the area who you can talk to face to face. A video is just kind of like hey here's some information but you got to be with somebody who can show you what to eat, what not to eat, what to touch, not to touch, etc. Just be really careful. Triple identify with absolute certainty before you try to use any plant as uh, edible or medicinal. Alright, let's head into the woods. Alright, so one of the first things we're going to look at is poison ivy and actually we're going to look at poison ivy and another plant that a lot of people confuse with poison ivy, uh, which often grows right next to it. So let me uh, get a spot here. There's a bunch of it right near me, but let me get a, a good angle so you can take a look at it. All right, so this right here is poison ivy. And you may be familiar with that line, leaves of three, let them be. So we got one, two, three. Again, one, two, three. Here's some more. One, two, three. Uh, often as they grow, you're going to get a little bit more jagged edges. You can see a little bit of it right there. This is actually not a uh, like a bush or a shrub. It's actually a vine. Um, let me get this, a stick here and actually push this over a little bit just to show you. Yeah, you can see it looks kind of like like it's starting to grow like a bush when you look at the woody stem. But eventually, this will just grow. It's it's a vine. It just doesn't look like it right now in this kind of stage when it's low to the ground. All right. So the other thing that often grows right near it, which looks a lot like it, is this which is Virginia creeper. Looks very similar, grows in the same areas, uh, but you can count five leaves instead of three. So that's one of the key ways you're gonna know that it's not poison ivy. It's got five leaves instead of three. And you can see I'm confident that this is not poison ivy because I'm rubbing it on my face. So anyhow, this is definitely Virginia creeper and it grows in the same place, also a vine. It is a good option um, in some stages to use for cordage. Uh, it does have kind of a woody stem eventually, so you gotta be careful about uh, or aware of when you're using it because if it gets really woody, you know, when it bends, it's just gonna snap on you. But let me get a, I'm gonna change the angle of the camera and show you Virginia creeper and poison ivy right near one another. All right, so I'll zoom in in a minute, but you can see right here, right there is uh, poison ivy. And right there with the five leaves is Virginia creeper. So obviously very close to one another. So I didn't mention this before, but um, if you didn't know, poison ivy is definitely a skin irritant. Some people um, don't seem to have allergies to it, but a lot of people do. You don't want to find out when you're out in the woods that you're allergic to poison ivy. So just stay away from it. But uh, you, there's an oil on it and you'll get it on your skin and eventually you'll start to get like uh, swelling in your skin. It'll be kind of red and bumpy. If you get it really bad, you can have to go to the hospital. They'll give you steroids or other things to um, basically take the edge off of all the itching and the pain. Because it is an oil, if you do, say you're walking through the woods and you get some, like you're looking down, you're like, man, I just walked through a bunch of poison ivy and I've got socks, but maybe some of my ankles were, but some of my ankle was exposed. Uh, find some water and get there and just rub, rub, rub. Like try to get that those oils off. Um, I generally try to stand in the stream and just like let it wash over me and rub my hands underwater. Another way to do it is you can rub like mud all over just to kind of get something that's grabbing a hold of the oil and getting it off of your skin. All right, as you can see, I'm by some water behind me here. Um, often found in lowlands where there's moisture, you're gonna find stinging nettle, which is right here. Let's see if I can get it in the shot. So this right here is stinging nettle. So this right here is your stinging nettle. Um, kind of, it's, it's not super tall right now, but it can grow quite tall. You can see the very jagged edge of the leaf, and I'm gonna very cautiously kind of bend this over. I'm going to get up close here and you'll see like tiny little white hairs here and those are actually the things that inject uh, the skin irritant into your skin. So let me just get close here. So 
So often the way you're gonna find out that you've hit stinging nettle is that your legs are on fire. All of a sudden you're like, why are my ankles just burning up? And what happens is that those tiny little hairs get on your skin and it kind of injects into your skin at a very you know, low level, but um, this irritant into your skin and your legs just start to burn. A great way to deal with that is to find mud and just rub it all over your legs and that'll take the, uh, the pain away usually. Um, it's not long lasting, it's not gonna you know, last for 10 hours or something like that. I will tell you that a lot of people talk about eating these. I've seen mixed results as far as it's definitely edible. The question is, how much can you eat um, of these before it's like, there's some things in them that you probably don't wanna have too much. So just be aware of that. But I do know a lot of people, I think I saw Creek Stewart the other day on Instagram say that he loves um, stinging nettles. So stinging nettles, I'll get a, give you another shot here so you can see what it looks like. But a cool plant. Um, Kind of a unique way it, it injects its uh, irritant into your skin but definitely be aware when you're in an area long pants uh, when you're around stinging nettles is definitely a good idea all right this next thing is not an actual plant i want to talk about i just want to show you the tip of the plant just to uh as far as a wilderness awareness thing you could see that this has been eaten by likely a deer that came through so we've got a plant right here you can see the tip there. Let me just tear this off. And you can see, I mean, it's clearly been, it's something's taken the top of it off, but it's not a real clear tear uh, or a real clear like bite off snap and it's broken off even. It's kind of at an angle there, which is often a sign. Let me just get this so you can see it properly. Yeah. This is often a sign that a deer has, um, has been eating this because the way their teeth work is they basically kind of bite down and then go like this with their teeth or like this, but basically move their top and their uh, lower and upper jaw in a different direction so it tears off and then they eat it. And you could see right here what I just broke off. I mean, a lot of these tips are just consumed. So that's, I mean, we're in the Eastern Woodlands so there's almost always gonna be deer around, but that's another way to identify deer have been in this area and eating some of these plants. So one of the cool things about uh, the created world is that you often have a plant that's like got a detrimental side and then right near a plant that's helpful. So I already showed you poison ivy. I'm gonna show you some more here because it's actually growing as a vine on a tree. But I also wanna show you jewel weed, jewel weed, which is also known as touch me not. Um, very, very like just juicy stalk. And when I get poison ivy on me, I often crush, crush up jewel weed and rub it on my skin immediately and then after the fact even if I do have poison ivy people use jewelweed it's an astringent it seems like it kind of pulls some of the nasties out of the uh, out of the skin so there's lots of details you can look into jewelweed but I want to show you what it looks like it's called touch me not because in a certain season the flowers when you touch them they'll kind of explode and uh, launch out you know the tiny they're basically to, to reproduce themselves um, but let me show you jewelweed very cool plant um, I've heard people talk about these being edible, but in general, I stay away from them because there are some some things in the actual plant that are unhealthy for you to eat, so I, I don't eat jewelweed. Okay, so right here we have more stinging nettle. You can see that very jagged edge. And then this is jewelweed over here. Here, It looks a little bit similar um, as far as the jagged edge, but you can see a difference between those two. And then looking at the stalk, it's also very kind of thick and juicy. And I'll just break this top off here. All right, so yeah, that's jewel weed, jewel weed. It's hard to say jewel weed, but anyhow, jewel weed. Um, and you can look for little orange flowers in the right season um, to help identify it. One thing some people don't realize is that as you get into the deeper woods, a lot of you know the common plants you're gonna see like around your yard or in what we call transition areas, those things disappear because there's so little light once you get into the deep woods that only certain plants will actually grow. So I'm gonna have to find an open spot if I'm gonna find something like dandelion or plantain or something like that but here in the deep woods you got to really look because it's not everywhere because there's so much you know of the, the tall trees are blocking out the uh the sun and taking up the nutrients from a lot of those plants that grow along the ground most people know what a fern looks like but just to show you here behind me it's like just a sea of ferns and um in certain seasons with certain types of ferns you can eat the head of it that's why they call them fiddleheads because they look like the head of a fiddle so I got mosquitoes buzzing around me now, but as you can see, the ferns are out there, and they love the uh, they love the thick forest with the shade there. They grow really nicely in it. Well, I thought I had a little bit more time, but 
I was looking at my phone and I got actually head home. So I'm gonna head back out to the car and where the car is, it's a little bit more open. And so I'm just gonna show you real quick a bunch of, uh, I think I saw plantain out there. I might've seen some wood sorrel and some other things. So let me give you a quick rundown when I get out there of some, uh, some plants. We'll wrap this video up. Hopefully this was uh, educational for you guys. Just checking out some, uh, some plants here in the Eastern woodlands. Real quick on the way out, I wanna show you this. So that is called Trillium, and you can see the flower is just going to be opening up soon. This is white. Uh, you'll, there's purple. There's all different kinds. Really beautiful. This is kind of peeking out from uh, inside a bunch of ferns, but that's Trillium, and uh, a really beautiful flower during the uh, during the warmer months here in New Hampshire that you can find. All right, I got to be careful not to touch this because I'm really allergic to poison ivy. But you can see the vine growing here and that it is a very woody vine as it grows up this uh, this dead tree in front of me. And I will mention that um, even in the off season, the vine can be nasty and get you, the, uh, get you the rash. I've actually accidentally thrown broken up dead um, poison ivy vine into a fire, which makes it diffuse, which gets it all over you which is pretty terrible, don't do that. You might be able to hear the cars in the background. Let me just identify a couple things here. Right here, we've got clover. And this, uh, this three-leafed uh, plant right here is it. We've got dandelion here, um, there, and actually, where did I just see it? There was a dandelion flower, yeah, over here. So right there, that's the beginning of a dandelion flower. Right here, we've got plantain. You can see the stalk. Um, for most people, these are edible. And then people often try to eat these uh, to get a, um, it basically like gets into your system and there's something about it that the bugs don't like so they won't bother you as much, I've heard. Uh, and you can eat these as well. They're just kind of gross, honestly. Uh, but I've crushed these up and rubbed them on my skin as a um, as a bug repellent. So real quick here, I wanna note this because these are often by one another. So you have clover here, you can identify it with this little flower. And then if you go down to the bottom, you can see these leaves. But often right near it is this, which looks very similar. I'll actually grab some of them together. You can see the dark green leaf is clover. And then this more light green leaf, it's like two little leaves within one, they're heart shaped. That's wood sorrel, and it often has little yellow flowers. Nice lemony taste, but you shouldn't eat too much of it. I think it affects your kidney or your liver. I can't remember exactly, but clover you can eat pretty safely uh, for most people. Wood sorrel you can have a little bit. Um, it's a very lemony flavor. You can add it to a um, like a salad or something like that, but don't eat too much of it. But again, you just gotta be aware because they grow right next to one another, and people often confuse them. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thanks for checking out the uh, video here. Please subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids. Check out these other videos right here. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, and Vero as well. And as always, more videos coming soon. Take care.